بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ٹوڈیز لیکچر ول بی دی لاسٹ لیکچر پرٹیننگ ٹو دی انٹرنل فیچرز آف دی ہیپا تلمس تو یو می ہیو ابزورب دیٹ ہیپا تلمس از ویری امپارٹنٹ پارٹ آف دی نروی سسٹم ہیونگ سو مینی نیوکلی آئی اینڈ سو مینی فنکشنز اینڈ اٹ آلسو کنٹرول دی باڈی ہومیوسٹیسز سو دس از وائی We, we covered the um, features of uh, hypothalamus in so many lectures. Today is the eighth lecture and it is the last lecture. And uh, we will talk uh, about the applied aspects of hypothalamus. First, uh, we will discuss with the uh, applied aspects of hypothalamus. And uh, before hypothalamus, we talk about the thalamus. So at that time, we uh, have not to discuss the applied aspects of thalamus. So one part of the thalamus uh, was the subthalamic tegmental region. So what will be the applied aspects of subthalamic nucleus? So we will start with the applied aspects of hypothalamus. So hypothalamus uh, may be affected by inflammation by neoplasia, tumors, inflammation, neoplasia and vascular deficiency. And uh, hypothalamus uh, may be compressed by uh, hydrocephalus of third ventricle. So these were the uh, various conditions which may damage the hypothalamus or hypothalamic nuclei. Now, first of all, we'll talk about diabetes insipidus. is also known as the hypothalamus syndrome. Now diabetes uh, insipidus uh, is the condition in which there is increased secretion of dilute urine. Now, increased secretion of dilute urine is also known as polyuria. The, there will be increased secretion of dilute urine called polyuria. Increased secretion of dilute urine means uh, polyuria. 
then it also result uh, in increased water intake known as polydipsia increased water intake known as polydipsia this condition may result due to destruction of supra optic nucleus due to destruction of supra optic nucleus of the thalamus the supra optic nucleus of the thalamus is concerned with maintenance of water balance this nucleus produce adh which is also known as the uh, vasopressin antidiuretic hormone which helps in water reabsorption from distal cannulated tubule and collecting tubules of the kidney nephrons adh is produced in hypothalamus it is stored and secreted by posterior pituitary you know these hormones released from the neurons of the supraoptic nuclei reaches the pars nervosa or posterior pituitary via hypothalamo hypophysal nerve tract and in the hearing body is the hormone is stored and when the need arises it is released into the surrounding uh, blood vessels in the absence or reduced secretion of adh water is not absorbed by the kidneys and polyuria results more dilute urine is passed this also results in increased water intake that is polydipsia so diabetes and diabetes may also occur due to disease of the kidney in which it fails to respond to adh so number one the damage to the supraoptic nucleus of the hypothalamus and second the kidney disease also when the kidney fails to respond to adh adh is normally secreted from hypothalamus but uh, the kidney do not respond uh, give response to the uh, adh secretion so this will also result in diabetes insipidus now you know there is diabetes mellitus also so diabetes insipidus is characterized by polyuria and polydipsia there is increased secretion of the dilute urine and when there is a more water loss from the body it will in, uh, it will result in thirst and the patient will take more water so polydipsia now the other uh, condition is diabetes mellitus now how diabetes insipidus is differentiated from diabetes mellitus diabetes mellitus is again uh, characterized by some features that is there is polyuria polyuria polydipsia
same features as seen in the diabetes insipidus, but apart from it are hyperglycemia. Hyperglycemia, glycosuria, hyperglycemia, glycosuria, increased glucose level in the blood, then appearance of glucose in the urine, glycosuria. glycosuria. <clears throat> so these uh, uh, features, that is uh, polyuria, polydipsia, apart from polyuria, polydipsia, there is uh, hyperglycemia, glycosuria, and polyphagia. More eating polyphagia, excessive eating. So uh, these features will help to differentiate between um, diabetes insipidus and diabetes mellitus. That is, there is uh, uh, no hyperglycemia, glycosuria and uh, polyphagia in case of diabetes uh, insipidus. Now, next uh, condition is a uh, Froelich syndrome. Froelich syndrome or adiposo genital syndrome. Adiposo genital syndrome. The ventromedial nucleus of our thalamus act as a satiety center. The ventromedial nucleus. It acts as a satiety center. And as I explained you before, the uh, the satiety center means that being uh, satisfied uh, with food. Now, its damage damage of the ventromedial nucleus results in overeating. results in overeating overeating which leads to obesity overeating and obesity Obesity, also known as adiposity. Adiposity. Because this nucleus, when it is damaged, uh, there is no uh, effect 
as satiety. Therefore, the patient will eat. And this overeating leads to uh, adiposity. Now, lesion of the anterior hypothalamus may also destroy the cells of the cells that regulate output of gonadotropic hormones. Lesion of this nucleus, that is the ventromedial nucleus, uh, may also destroy the cells which regulate the secretion of gonadotropic hormone by anterior lobe of the pituitary. Effect secretion of gonadotrophic hormones. Now, apart from obesity, because when this nucleus is uh, damaged, it also, as I told you, affects the release of gonadotrophic hormone. This results in hyposexuality and deficiency of secondary sexual characteristic. This uh, will result in hyposexuality. result in hyposexuality and uh, mm, uh, there will be also deficiency of secondary uh, sexual characteristic. Secondary sexual characteristic will also be affected. The secondary sexual characteristics may be delayed. Now, combination of these two, obesity and hyposexuality, so combination of Obesity and hyposexuality really result uh, in this syndrome, which is known as the Froehlich syndrome. Uh, Froehlich C H positive Froehlich syndrome, which is also known as Adipo, adiposo genital syndrome. Now next condition resulting from damage to hypothalamic nuclei. That is the uh, necrolepsy. Necrolepsy. Now, people uh, suffering from this condition, known as the necrolepsy, fall asleep at any time of the day for brief periods. The cause of this disease might greatly be due to reduction in the number of orexine containing neurons. Reduction in orexine containing neurons.
there is a decreased number of neurons uh, in which there is orexin in the hypothalamus. This uh, neuron destruction is due to maybe due to anti-immune disease, maybe uh, due to some degenerative changes, degeneration, uh, maybe due to autoimmune disease. Next to necropsy are sleep disturbances. Sleep disturbances. Suprachiasmic nuclei act as a circadian clock, as you know. Suprachiasmatic nuclei of the hypothalamus act as circadian clock. control sleep wake rhythm now in aging there is a marked loss of neurons in suprachiasmatic nucleus which may be associated with sleep distances so mainly it is uh, uh, age related in aging next shame rage reaction Now this occur where either there is the, the stimulation of dorsomedial nucleus. Either there is stimulation of the dorsomedial nucleus or destruction of ventromedial nucleus of hypothalamus. Either dorsomedial nucleus of hypothalamus is stimulated, it will result in this re reaction or when there is destruction of the ventromedial nucleus of the thalamus which result in the shame rate reaction. Now it produces a, a pattern of senseless rage named as shame rage. Now high decerebration in cat leave the animal in rage reaction. So the reasons are number one stimulation of dorsomedial nucleus or destruction of another nucleus of the abdominus that is ventromedial nucleus and similarly high decerebration when the cerebral cortex is removed especially the uh, prefrontal cortex prefrontal cortex is inhibitory to the 
uh, hypothalamic or uh, to the autonomic functions of the hypothalamus. So when we remove the p-central cortex, that inhibition is lost and uh, the individual or the animal is excited, resulting in shame rage um, uh, reaction. So there is either stimulation or distraction or removal of or damage to the prefrontal cortex. This celebration of several cortex, especially prefrontal cortex, prefrontal cortex. Normally, this uh, precentral cortex is inhibitory, inhibitory to the um, autonomic functions of the hypothalamus, inhibitory to the um, emotions of the uh, animal or um, the individual. Now, in this uh, same way, the animal or an individual display a varying degree of wildness. It produces a picture of violent rage, which will build up to the point of uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the point uh, that the animal will either attack the observer or it will assume a um, the defensive posture. Shame rage uh, reaction comprise of behavioral changes and physical changes. We divide these uh, effects of distraction producing shame rage and the features of shame rage we divide into different types of the changes, for example, behavior, behavior changes. Behavioral changes. And number two are physical uh, changes, physical expression. Now, the uh, uh, behavior changes, changes in the uh, behavior. The changes seem emotional in pattern. These are emotional changes. Related to the emotions. Uh, and this uh, range from apathy to excitement and uncontrolled uh, expression. So behavioral changes mainly emotional changes. Now physical changes there may be a rise in blood pressure there may be rise in pulse pulse rate there will be tachypnea increased respiratory rate there uh, uh, may be flushing of the face Pilo erection, flushing of the face, pilo erection, pupil dilatation,
people will be dilated and the uh, the animal or individual uh, will show an attacking or defensive attitude. These are the uh, physical. Now, uh, some uh, pictures, some pictures uh, will uh, show these changes. Now, for example, this is lamina terminalis. Then optic chiasma. Tuber cyanarium pituitary. Memory body. Midbrain section. Thalamic sulcus. Now I told you in this condition um, there may be stimulation. Stimulation of the uh, dorsomedial nucleus. Of hypothalamus. Or then maybe destruction of ventromedial nucleus. This will result in shame rage reaction. In animal, for example, here you can see. Similarly, in uh, human beings. eyelids open, the pupil dilated, flushing of the face, increased heart rate, pulse rate, uh, cutaneous uh, vasoconstriction to divert more blood to the brain and heart, etc. So these two pictures, um, they will, uh, ex they, these pictures explain to some extent the conditions. Uh, in case of shame rage. Next. <clears throat> Craniopharyngioma. Craniopharyngeal. Now it is a congenital tumor which develops from remnant of Rathke's pouch. T 
tumor arising from remnant of Rutke's pouch. Now in the previous lecture already we talked about how the pituitary gland mm, developed. So Rutke's pouch has an important role in the development of pituitary gland, the anterior pituitary gland. It is the most common supratentorial tumor in children. We know the dural folds, one is Fox cerebri, and there is tentorum cerebelli in the cranial cavity. And part of the brain is above the level of tentorial uh, tentorum cerebelli, and part of the brain is below the tentorum cerebelli in the cranial cavity. So because the pituitary gland is above the level of tentorum cerebelli, and there, if there is a remnant of Rathke's pouch, it will result in a tumor, known as craniopharyngioma. Now, it is the most common supratentorial tumor in children and is the most common cause of hypopituitarism. Most common cause of hypopituitarism Hypopituitarism, most common cause of hypopituitarism in children. So, this is result in a syndrome called hypothalamic syndrome. So, hypothalamic syndrome, hypothalamic. is characterized by hypopituitarism. Now because there is pressure on the hypothalamus also, so due to pressure on the hypothalamus and optic chiasma, pressure on hypothalamus, you know, optic chiasma is also part of uh, hypothalamus. So this tumor may, um, uh, the optic chiasma is also part of hypothalamus. Therefore, this tumor may also compress the optic chiasma. So when the optic chiasma is compressed, the patient will also present with bitemporal hemianopia. by temporal hemianopia. So this by temporal hemianopia is because of compression on the optic tract. Now apart from these major effects of uh, inflammation, uh, tumors, or uh, vascular insufficiency. The other uh, applied aspects are Applied aspects are applied with clinical aspects related to the 
involvement of hypothalamus, for example, is hypothermia or hyperthermia. Hypothermia, low body temperature, or hyperthermia. may also result in involvement of the hypothalamus. Sexual dis disorders. Sexual disorders, sleep disturbances, Emotional and behavioral distur dis uh, disturbances. And behavioral, emotional and behavioral disturbances. And uh, widespread disturbances in homeostasis. Homeostatic disturbances. So these are some other effects regarding uh, applied or clinical aspects. Now, uh, these were uh, various uh, uh, applied aspects of hypothalamus. Now, the second part I told you is the um, applied or clinical aspects of uh, subthalamic uh, nucleus. Subthalamic nucleus. Applied aspects of subthalamic nucleus. You know this part, the subthalamic tegmental region, we discussed with the thalamus. So, uh, what will be effects of damage of this nucleus? Now, lesion of the subthalamic nucleus produce hemibelismus. It will result in a condition known as the hemibelismus. It occurs on the opposite side of the body, hemibelismus. The characteristic features of uh, this condition are involuntary and violent movements of throwing or fly, fly type usually affecting the proximal parts of the uh, upper limb. Involuntary violent movements of the um, forelimb part of the upper limb, forearm part of the upper limb. So this was the applied aspect of damage to the subthalamic nucleus. Uh, now we just we finished with the hypothalamus and uh, next to this we will start with the internal features of the mesencephalon or midbrain. Thank you very much.